I want to ask you this. You're, you're making records and all of a sudden, did, did, did you ever remember thinking to yourself, if I ever have a hit, uh, I'm going to do this or I'm going to buy that. Or, and then all of a sudden you did have a hit record. Mm -hmm. What was your first hit record? It was these eyes. It was these eyes. Yeah. And how did that song, how was that song written? What? Randy, you know, I'm the I'm the keyboard player, so everybody always thought that was my riff. That piano riff was actually Randy Backman's, and I was always very impressed because he's a guitar player, and that's a, a pretty nice riff. That um, it's like a D minor seven, and for a guitar player to play that on piano, I was always very impressed. But all that's all he had was bum bum da 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 bum bum da 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 da. And uh, then he had a, I think the first line he wanted to call it these arms, and that's about as far as he had. And then we got together in Winnipeg, and um, at my my mother and I was still living at home with my mother and grandmother. Awesome. He came over one Saturday morning. I was still very young, uh, nineteen or twenty when we wrote that. You were making records already. You had oh stuff yeah, out. I, I made my first record when I was sixteen, sixteen, seventeen. I had a couple singles with the Devrons, and then once we I uh, joined the Guess Who, I had just turned eighteen. We did an album when Chad Allen was still in the band. I was barely singing lead on anything, mm -hmm. and then we had about ten or eleven singles back to back, all of which bombed before these eyes. So I am no stranger to failure. I'm no stranger to being knocked down and getting back up again. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden these eyes comes out, you're, all, you're getting added everywhere, everywhere. You can tell that this is, ex but what was that feeling oh, like? Oh, it was so exciting. One of the greatest memories I ever have, and it's still so vivid as though it were yesterday. We were going to New York City to play and promote and, to, and be photographed by RCA, and these eyes had just taken off like crazy in the States. It was in the top five in Billboard. And Randy and I are in a limo coming into New York, and we're going over the Tri-State Bridge, and we see this Empire State Building and all that cluster of skyscrapers, and the radio is on, and these eyes comes on. No! And we're listening, and we're looking at the Empire State Building, and I'm 20 years old, and I can't hardly believe this. And then the DJ comes on at the end and says, hey, that's that great record by that group from Canada. These eyes, fantastic. I'm going, holy Mac, pinch me. You know, it was a, a, a amazing to be that young and to be from Winnipeg, which is so remote. And there we are looking at the Empire State Building and they're playing the record and talking about what a great Canadian record. It was really very exciting, yeah. you know. You, you mentioned uh, you were just from Winnipeg. And you know what? Brian Adams said once, he said, creativity is not regional. There, it knows no location. No, no, absolutely not. Can, so your life changed completely. It was so. completely different. And, and um, you know, the only reason these eyes ever happened, um, we would have written the song, sure, but... We were doing weekly television on CBC. We were on every Thursday from 5.30 till 6. And Jack Richardson, our producer, happened to be... He lived here in Toronto. He happened to be watching the show that day. The producer of the show said, Look, you and Randy are writing a lot of songs. You know, I'm not, I'm not adverse to you doing um, a few of your own original songs on the show. So Randy and I chose to do These Eyes. We did These Eyes on the show. Jack Richardson was here in Toronto, happened to be watching the show... Loved the song so much, believed so strongly in the song, he flew our band to New York. And we recorded the whole first album, Wheatfield Soul, before we had a contract. He believed in us that much. And he mortgaged his he house. He mortgaged his house to pay to fly us and put Surely us up Surely must in have loved that, his wife. Huh? Oh, she didn't <laughs> find out about it till later, till way later on. And then once the gold record started pouring in, it was easier for him to break yeah. it to her. You know. <laughs> Can you play it? Would you? Would you do? Uh, yeah, would sure, you uh, do us the honor, Burton Cummings again? I, I, as a matter of fact, I think on this uh, on this Yamaha, I have a, a sound that's almost um, almost like the one was that was on the record. Uh, Close. Nice. Now that was Randy's riff. And I thought, wow. I thought, what a cool riff for a guitar player. I mean, and you wrote a, the lyrics after that? A, an A, C, D, and F. You know, that's a, a, a that's... D minor 7. And I, I heard that hook and I said, wow, that's great, man. And Randy had like a, he wanted to call it these arms. So we... Putched Geet around and Putched Geet around for about half an hour, and it was finished in about half an hour, and uh, changed my life. And these eyes cry every night for you. And these arms. Long to hold you again. The hurtings on me, yeah. 
those are high notes, pretty high notes for only five in the afternoon. Um, but we, we got, we, we were working on it, working on it. It was really all finished in about half an hour. That whole busy part in the middle was mine. Mm -hmm. Randy said, it really needs a great bridge. And I said, well, why don't we do this? Eli, I'm crying. <clears throat> Pardon me. Coffee. Eli, I'm crying. These eyes have seen a lot of love, but they're never gonna see another one like I had with you. And then it kept going up a whole tone. These eyes are crying. These eyes have seen a lot of loves, but they're never gonna see another one like I had with you. And it kept going up and up and up into some ridiculous range, but I was only 20, so it was easy. But really, the song changed everything for us. You know, uh... We got an award not long ago. It's now in the United States. It's interesting. It's been played on the radio four million times. And that's four million tracked plays. There are wow. probably another million that were never tracked on the computers. So that's really major. It's up there now with And I Love Her and Lady Madonna and Bridge Over Troubled Water, songs like that, you know. That's incredible. I never yeah, would have dreamed I'd have one of those. Yeah, that's that's. Heavy man, I, I, I'm in awe of this. Uh, that you're just sitting here hanging out with well, me. Well, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you another great little anecdote. We when we got the we got the award way back in '87 or '88. Randy and I were uh, we were flown to New York for a big luncheon. BMI. It's called the Million Airs. A I R. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And these eyes had just passed a million plays. Well, that luncheon was amazing, man. Yoko was there getting awards for. John Lennon's songs. Um, Benny King was at the luncheon. Mm. He was getting one for five million plays for Stand wow. By Me. Uh, Daryl Hall and the girl that co-wrote Kisses on My List, they got one for a million plays. So this yeah. luncheon for a songwriter was like, oh my God, it's like so, the Olympics for yeah. songwriters. And to be part of that and be getting these eyes. And then uh, I also got one that day for Stand Tall for one million plays. So wow. it was a big afternoon for me in the, in the big city.